Why are whites disappearing from TV commercials? It's an interesting thing my brother has sent to me, and uh, I think it's getting some rounds in right-wing areas, and uh, I get it. Look, I mean, Finney's out there barking away. Right now, there are people mad that my dog is barking. I can't concentrate with your dog. Eh, it's a welcome to my world, man. Hold on a second. Not just advertising uh, where whites are disappearing from. It's all over the TV. In fact, we're watching football right now, and the commercials are, there's just not that many whites. It's just not. And, you know, you could, and actually, even in TV itself, it's just not. Now you can gripe. I actually don't think it's that big of a deal. I just like, who cares? I don't watch any TV. I mean, I literally, you know, we'll watch what we're watching right now. Uh, Thicker Than Water, a show in Sweden, uh, which is subtitled. My wife and I enjoy that. Um, what do we watch it for that? We just, you know, every now and again, we'll watch something on Amazon or something. But uh, on Masterpiece, I think, you know, NPR and PBS Masterpiece Theater. I just don't watch that much TV. I watch primarily YouTube channels. Uh, that's it. And, and Rumble. That's it. So, um, I, anyway, let's read this article. We're going to read a little bit. I, I, I just, I don't get it, man. I, I get it. I mean, I get it because I know racism when I see it. And this is specifically racist, and I'll prove it to you. But I, I don't, it doesn't get me that worked up. And uh, so this is from Jacob Fraden from The American Thinker. Why are Caucasians vanishing in TV commercials? Why are we even called Caucasians? Does anyone, let's take a look why. This one from mentalfloss.com. I got no clue the legitimacy of this, but it's pretty interesting because here's the caucus reasons. Uh, lesser caucus, I guess. Georgia, Armenia, that. Um, Russia, Russia. And he says, uh, it goes back to German anthropologist Frederick Blumenbach. In his work in the late 1700s and early 1800s, he divided human beings into five distinct races based on their physical characteristics. Uh, and you can read all this. I'll probably get banned if I say it. So um, Caucasians were considered white. But why? I mean, and I guess, uh, well, he looked at a lot of physical traits to carve out his categories. He thought characteristics, characteristics of the skull. <laughs> The size and angle of the forehead were equally or especially important. He thought the skulls of Georgians were exemplary of the characteristics of whites and named the group of whites after the Caucasus mountain range that right here. All right. Well, that's, uh, it goes back to, uh, although uh, he makes, all this makes Blumenbach sound like the forerunner of phrenology in a scientific attempts to justify discrimination, but while he categorized the races, he didn't put them in a hierarchy or protested any attempts and protested any attempts to misuse the groupings. I, I just, I don't care. Um, whatever. I guess so he's trying to say, hey, but I mean, this guy is funny. So uh, if you're uh, right here, if you're Arab or Middle Eastern descent, you're also considered Caucasian. Uh, the Boston bombers were literally from the Caucasus, Caucasus and they're inherently Caucasian. And this guy says the Boston bombers are, are actually from the Caucas Caucasian region, meaning they could not be more ca Caucasian. And this guy says, yes, you are racist. Uh, so this guy who writes this article is from his Slavic and Baltic heritage. Uh, his family, my friends whose families come from Ireland, Italy, Germany, and pretty much anywhere else in Europe. We're all considered Caucasian. I, it's just... It's, I don't want, it's just boring. <laughs> but with that said, this is the culture we live in. So whites are Caucasians. Um, anyway, but commercials take up 27% of commercials TV screen time. And they're the main source of income for TV and radio stations, which is why they want everyone to... To say YouTube's no good, that's why they want YouTube to say, look, you can't have people on there with your conspiracy theories. In most cases, advertising on the channels appears simultaneously. Uh, nowadays, they also take over the internet. Yeah, exactly. For financial support, websites run ads on their pages. The largest share are supplied and controlled by Google. Yeah. Uh, and on YouTube, in the most inappropriate places, they cut to the action film of films, lectures, and concerts, tearing apart musical performances. There's no escaping the commercials. Well, if you pay for the premium, I think it's nine bucks, ten bucks a month on YouTube, you don't get that. In the United States, whites, uh, not including Hispanics, is about 58% of the population. In real life, whites are still the majority, but now on TV and the internet, they are, oh wait, in, the, in real life, whites are still the majority, about 58%. 
But on the TV and the internet, they're swept under the rug like trash. Blacks comprise 14% of the U.S. population, but appear in 50% of the commercials. And that's uh, overrepresentation. White actors now appear to promote health insurance, gold, loans, and some medicines. Moreover, if a white person, why are we capitalizing white? If a white person appears in a commercial, he is usually sick, old, a freak, or at the very least, an appendage to a black partner. Uh, if there's a doctor on the screen, he's usually black, while the patient is usually white. White men appear in only 4% of the commercials. All right. uh, so why do advertisers, and there's a Rocket Mortgage Super Bowl commercial. Uh, why, and, and there is one thing I, ha I think we can all agree. There's an awful lot of uh, interracial marriages on or dating on uh, on advertisements now, way over representative of the uh, the status that is true. Look, if you want, I could care less. You want to date somebody? I don't. I literally don't care. But let's not pretend like <laughs> the average <laughs> relationship is interracial, like the commercials do. It's it's silly. Uh, so why do advertisers ignore the long-standing rules of marketing? The answer is simple. At the heart of the nonsense is the political correctness in a form of even an Orwell could not have foreseen. Business executives go out of their way to publicly show their conformity with universal diversity and critical race theory. Demanding that the white, oh, I'm not going to read that because it's, no, they're not demanding that whites be blamed. They're just, they're, for some reason, they think we have to show that, uh, we have to show that we're diverse. Why does the white, why do whites uh, still accept this? Um, why don't people tell political correctness to go to hell? After all, the U.S. is not Stalin's USSR, and anyone who disagrees with the party is not sent to a camp. Why is there such a conformity among the American people? Uh, the answer is simple. The reason is fear, albeit a more vegetarian level than it was under the Soviet rule. Ordinary people keep their mouths shut for fear of losing jobs, not getting a holiday bonus, not getting promoted, and being socially ostracized. This is understandable, and I won't blame them, although I wouldn't respect them either. But where are the people? But what are people of higher position afraid of? The head and owners of businesses. What is threatening them? No one's going to drive them out of their positions or take their business through fear of boycotts. Can be realistic. Um, there, look, I, I don't know. I, I, this doesn't, I, I sit there and I say, this is why I text my brother. say, yeah, I'm okay. I'll tell you exactly why I text my brother. Cause I said, man, they're, they're appealing to people most likely who are going to part with their dollars. Um, and so I said to him, my brother, this is good. Actually, whites are maybe becoming less susceptible to the propaganda of advertising. We know advertising is just propaganda. Man. It's just a fact. And so if they're saying, if I'm a business, I'm saying white men in particular are less inclined to buy my stuff because of my propaganda. I still need to get an ROI in my, my advertising. And I was just reading my man, Miles Beckler. He sent a blog piece the other day talking about his ROI on Facebook. He puts three bucks in, he gets eight bucks out. All right, even the most woke advertiser in the world has got to get a positive ROI. And as such, it's not like these, look, I get it. Marketing is run, HR and marketing are run by left-wing you know, lunatics. I get it. But they still got to turn profit. If they're not turning profit, if they're not getting ROI, they'll quickly be out of a job. And so they're saying, who is most likely going to buy? So they do these consumer good surveys and, uh, you know, uh, group, uh, what do they call their uh, focus groups, and no different than a jury pool. And they're saying, okay, here's a bunch of, people who's more likely to buy our product I, that's what they're doing and they're sitting there saying if as other people of uh you know blacks and spanish speakers and whatnot as they kind of rise up in terms of the uh, disposable income they're going to appeal to them it's just that simple as whites get older and they they and we know the was the marketing is like 25 to 45 or 25 to 18 to 49 something like that as you get older and more ingrained in your ways, you're less likely to change your habits. Thus, the propaganda, and you're probably more smart too, the propaganda won't appeal to you as much. And as such, as white men get older, white men and white women, but white men in particular, because there isn't any white men in these ads hardly anymore. As white men get older, they're less likely to open up their wallets to the propaganda. Just inherently makes sense, man. I mean, and so as younger people get more financially sophisticated, sophisticated, right? That's what propaganda is appealing to, to make them seem sophisticated, make them seem like they've arrived so they can spend their money on their goods. They're going to be more inclined to buy. So not having advertisements geared towards you tells me that you're in a pretty good place. 
that you're sitting there saying, hey, I'm not spending my crap, my money on your crap. Your advertisements don't do me anything. It doesn't, it doesn't steer me. I'm, I'm already ingrained in what I'm going to buy. I don't, I, I just, there's a lot of problems on the world. This is not one that bothers me in the least. I was going to say something else here too, one sec. Fine, but back in like the late 80s, early 90s, the Supreme Court ruled against, I think it's like the Washingtonian magazine that they had to have more minorities in their ads because basically the ads were all whites. And, uh, you know, the Washington, D.C., they call it Chocolate City for a reason. Uh, basically, I, I'm sure it's the Supreme Court, but they basically said, um, you know, you, you can't you can't do that. Um, you have to have more diversity in there and uh, or else you're basically you're discriminating. I can't remember the rules. I just I did a quick search. I just can't find it. But I remember that. I remember that. Oh, oh I, I, I remember thinking like it was yesterday. There's going to come a time where the diversity goes the other direction. <laughs> and here we are. Um, I just, I don't know, there are a lot of issues. This is not one that bothers me so much. Again, I think mostly is because the, the, the target market is not me. I'm not likely, I don't watch that much TV. I don't likely to get swayed from advertising and advertisers know that. Now, is that a good move? That's up to them. Hopefully they all go bankrupt and rue the day that they uh, went left wing and woke. But uh, as we say here today, nah. lots of other things get upset with, namely when you got a big old puppies, two big old puppies that want to give you kisses, life is good. So find other things to get mad about. This isn't one. All right, we'll see you. Oops, excuse me.